meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? You can do it from there. <laughs> Here. <laughs> okay, um, who's first? Dr. Chase? Dr. Here. Chase, uh, C, D, E. Dr. Ms. Chase. Egan? <laughs> Here. Mr. Cater? Oh, Here. Me. I'm sorry. Ms. Hazard is absent. Okay, <clears throat> Ms. Healy? Here. Ms. Hollerback? Here. Mr. McCosker? Here. Ms. Young? Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. McCosker? Yeah, yeah, sure. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion, motion to, to approve. approve with a change. Okay, please. and what would that change be? Um, I'd like to remove um, under consent items 8.01, approval of the minutes for board meetings on June 25th, July 10th, and July 16th. Okay, and would you like to bring that back at the next meeting? Yes, please. Okay, thank, thank you. you. There, there, and just for transparency, there's, there seems to be some discrepancies in some of the notes in the meeting minutes, so some members wanted to just a you know just a couple more days to eyeball it and make sure it's accurate. Okay, um, do we have a second? Second. All right. We motion for a amended agenda to remove the minutes and put them on the next meeting from the consent agenda. I and just have a quick. quick yes. I just have a quick Ms. question. Young. Do we do we know exactly what it is that we're looking at in the no? And, I, and frankly, I haven't been through them all either. So I would like some time to actually look at them. Oh, it was just I, that we didn't go. Some people did not go through them. Is that I did not look through them. Well, I didn't have gotcha. time. One, but there, Ms. Hazard has not had a chance to go through them thoroughly to check for accuracy. Okay, gotcha. there's, there's just a lot of minutes there, and and before we approve them for the record, I think it's a good idea that we do. Um, you know, I'll have a chance to go through them all. Just want to make sure that that's exactly what it is. We'll look at it. And then approve it at the next one, right? Is that what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. It'll be on, on the consent agenda again, and any changes anybody wants to make, they can, um, you know, bring forward at that point. Okay. Or I'd suggest if there's any specific changes anybody wants to to make, that they send them to um, to Ms. Missy, Hall, yeah, and then she can, um, you know, and include that on, they the, should on be the agenda just things as well. That are, because so they're drafted at this point; they're not they're not final until they're approved. Right, and the changes are actually items that um, Ms. Hall may not have captured correctly. That, is that what you're referring to? Okay. Thank you. Or that, that someone might want another highlight. All right. So uh, all in favor of the motion to approve the amended agenda, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Dr. Kisner, we have your school transportation staff report update. Ah, oh, welcome, Mr. Sadath. <laughs> you look tired. No, <laughs> not at all. Before you start, I want to say thank you. Sure, you're welcome. I know it's, I know it's tough, and, and, and I think we're, we're, we're encouraging patience. Well, thank and you. I want to make sure, like, what's the extension on your, um, <laughs> do we have an extension? Do you have signatures? <laughs> Dr. Kisner, do you no, have no, signatures No, no, he's driving the bus, Ms. Young. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand. That's what I'm saying. I want to make sure that we have you locked in. Yeah, well. All right. Well. We'll talk let me, let me not that, hear it. Okay. Well, okay, the clock hasn't started yet, right. so your clock will start now, Ms. Hall. Uh, okay. Um, are you changing the slides, Missy? Oh, ah, there it is. Okay, good. Just a uh, Madam Chair, Board, Dr. Kisner, I want to give you just an update of where we are as far as our buses, our whole department, actually, and this, this will be a brief update. This is from a superintendent's memo way back in 2010 and this is when the uh, state extended the recommended time that you keep a bus from 12 years to 15 years and you can see right in there that it was a money savings thing and it's just a recommendation it is not a requirement um, i wish at some point they would step up and make that a requirement but it, it is not so the recommendation is 15 years. At our, the last state report that I completed, our mainstream buses ran 1,473,182, 1,473,182 miles in the 17-18 school year at $3.56 per mile. 
and special needs was 1,007,595 miles at $4.39 per mile. The difference there in the cost is that our special needs buses carry fewer students and have a, in most cases, uh, have a driver and an attendant on the bus. So that's the, the difference. And you can see the, the star down there. These, there's a, a formula that DOE uses. Once our finance department puts their CAFR information in, I get an email that says the state report for transportation is ready. And I plug the numbers in. And they, based on um, tires, fuel, maintenance, and uh, labor or the, uh, and other operational expenses, that's how they come up with those numbers. I always like to see those numbers as low as possible, um, as does everyone in the office. And when those numbers vary, the state asks us, why are these numbers varying? And we have to make sure that we do have a reason. So here are your body styles. And this is important. On the left is a Type D school bus, and that's your transit bus. You can have a front engine or a rear engine. We have about 15 rear engine buses, and they are reaching the end of their life. And that's a 78 passenger bus. On the left, on the right is a Type C bus, a conventional, and that is a 77 passenger bus. And tip, all we're purchasing now are the Type C buses. Uh, I like to drive the Type Ds, but the drivers prefer the Type Cs. And while I'm talking capacity, the manufacturers call them a 77 passenger bus. That is, if everybody on that, every student on that bus has a 13 inch rear end. So when we talk a, a capacity on a bus, the spiel I gave or the training I gave at the end service was that if a student's body does not fit totally in that seat, the bus is overloaded. And that there should be no, no uh, body parts hanging off of the seat or anything else. Now, if other students won't slide over, that becomes another issue. And then in our fleet, we also have the Type A bus, which is a 16-passenger. It's a, a van body bus, but it's built to the same Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards as the big buses. And then we have the multifunction school activity bus. We have three of those. I'm not a fan of those buses because we have two more that we use on trips. But these buses are good for trips. And that's it. The other two that we consider our activity buses are yellow, have all the lights, have everything in place so we can use those buses on routes when need be. So there's the overview of buses. Here's what we have, three Type A's, five activities, 15 64 passenger buses, 171 77s, and 66 special needs. That's our current fleet. Here are the average miles. You'll notice well, you'll see this from the next slide. The, the special needs are probably not as old as the mainstream fleet, but they get more miles because there's more need to travel across the county depending on where the programs are and what, what the students need. And so we're at 117 with mainstream, and our activity buses are running all over the place. They're the newest bus, or the average age is the newest, but they go everywhere. So we get a lot of miles on those. And there's the average age that we're looking at. Now, here's, here's the telltale slide on where we are as far as replacing buses if we want to talk about the 15-year span. Um, you'll notice here in 2000, or if, if We've got 2,003 buses which are reaching the end of their life, and there's another slide coming up that breaks this down a little bit more, that we've got 18 out there, and we're going to need to do something with those. Then in 2005, you'll notice that we have, between special needs and mainstream, 30, I can't see, what's it, a six up there, 34 buses. We did have 59 of those buses. It was a bad year. We have gotten rid of 
before the end of their life cycle, sometimes within 10 years of their life cycle, we've gotten rid of those buses because they cost more to fix than they were worth. So that has sort of hurt us. It was uh, uh, a bad purchase back in 2005. And you'll see coming along, we had one year with zero. 2016 concerns me or, or should concern us because we've got another bubble there. And that was to, to help out where these 2005s had left us behind. Here's where we're reaching the end of our lifespan. Our lifespan. And I base these not on the model year of the bus, because you know you're probably getting close to where you can go get a 2020 car now, and we're still in 2019. So I base this on our in-service date, when we actually put these buses on the road. At some point during the school year, we're going to have six special needs buses that will reach 15 years. And 23 mainstream buses will reach 15 years, and some 16 at some point in the school year. And looking out to 2021, we got 28 more that are reaching that, that period. And, you know, I say that the 15 years isn't a isn't a, um, a requirement, but as buses go, usually when they reach that point, it's time. It's time to, to move on. Here's our four-year purchase history. 15, 16, we look pretty good. 16, 17, and uh, let me back up with that. Each year I have asked for 25 buses because we have found that if we do that for a few years, which it's all out of kilter now, but if we do that for a few years, we'll reach a point where each year we would just need 18 buses, a uh, mix of mainstream and special needs. We were on track in 15 and uh, 16. When we came over to 17, that sort of threw a wrench in the plan. And then 18, you'll see, we did have to boost the special needs fleet some because we were struggling with the buses. And at this point, we have nine mainstream buses ordered and five special, excuse me, six special needs. Well, I'm having a rough time here tonight with math, aren't I? Four, five special needs, it's 14 total. And I called the vendor today, they are due in at the end of October. Because unlike buying cars, you just don't go pick them off the lot. They have, they actually manufacture them. Here's our AC buses. Activity, we're, we're golden. Special needs, <clears throat> we're getting closer every day. Mainstream, you can see where we are with that. We've got 18 out of 189 mainstream buses. We have the, the spares, of course. Um, 15 of the type Ds, 77 type Cs were at uh, 12, uh, three Head Start buses. We, due to federal guidelines, we have to have safety restraints. We call them Bessie seats that are, we keep three spare buses outfitted for Head Start because if one of those buses goes down en route, to put those Bessies on another bus, it, it takes at least an hour to, to outfit a bus with those. So we try to keep three set aside. And then um, the Type C64 <coughs> passenger. And if anybody ever asked, we used about a half a million gallons of fuel last year at a cost of $1,030,000. And uh, you've been watching fuel prices this year. They've been a little bit higher than they have been in the past couple of years. Uh, we, we had, in my first few years here, we were spending between eight and 900000 on fuel. And you'll see this year it did pop up and get us over. Mr. Sullivan, yes, you, you might want to go back, for, if you show this again, that last um, slide, that last comma in the, um, needs to be a period. Oh, okay. And in the, the cost. All right, it says thank a, you. It says a billion. And 30. It says a billion. It yeah. I'm telling you, fuel really went up last year. <laughs> Our budget uh, is 300 million. Yeah, <laughs> so, sorry about that. We, no. we all missed it. We had four sets no, of eyes no, on it, and we I'm, all missed I'm just, it. I just mentioned it in case you use this again. Right. That's all. 
Believe right. me, we know you all are overextended, so. No, we're in Doing good shape. Great. And daily operations, what you see up here is a route map, and we just use that as a background. Here are some of the challenges. Um, we do reevaluate the routes every year, and there seems to be a misconception that once a route is in place, a route is in place. Well, students move on, and now when we get in the neighborhood, Austin Ridge and places like that, they're pretty much stable because families are in there and the students are there. We have the stop set up. But in other places, the routes are changing. We're always looking for um, new efficiencies or things we can do to, to better use our equipment. And then this one, <laughs> we, after the open houses, we get flooded. Some of the schools will enter the data and we do a lot of data entry. I would say we get at least a thousand, if not more, requests for changes. And that's, that's all hand jamming things in. So it sort of slows us down and that, that goes with requests between schools and that type of thing. And here were some of our challenges yesterday. Uh, somebody did hit a telephone pole. I hope they're okay. <laughs> and we lost all of our call center functions. One thing I, uh, five years ago that I really wanted to happen was that our phones would roll over. When the first one's busy, it rolls to the next one, to the next one, because one of the biggest complaints we get is that we're sitting there looking at our phones and not answering them. And I can guarantee you, we're not sitting there watching the phones <laughs> ring. And we lost that on yesterday. We didn't have that function. Our poor receptionist was, was every call was coming into her. And she did come back today, though. Um, and they were able to get the, reinstate the call center, but then we lost voicemail. So after the phone rang for a certain amount of time, it would cut off. And then our Versatrans, which we live by, went down from 4 to 4.30 yesterday, which what's happening at 4 to 4.30 on the first day of school? We've got our elementary lift going on. So we had a we had a few glitches and we we did have five drivers that uh we were short five drivers three unexpectedly just didn't show up yesterday and with five drivers to cover routes a route consists of three runs so we had a few that weren't uh, covered and we had to scramble to get that done that was resolved today we, we did, yesterday we cleared at 610, today we cleared at 525. And it's only gonna get better. Five o'clock is about our max, but we're gonna keep pushing. Here's our staff, and I would like to say something about the staff. I know I only have 10 minutes. Am I gonna get beeped um, out of you're, here? You're actually at 14 right now. <laughs> oh, I'm That's sorry. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. No, I, I, didn't, all right. I didn't stop you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Our staff, you have one of the most... <laughs> I thought I was going to get the shepherd's hook. That did happen to me last year. Anyway, um, I, you have a dedicated staff. When I left the office at 6.30, there were people in there still working, trying to handle some of the additional requests. And when you, if I were to ask them, hey, why are we here doing this? It's not for a paycheck. I asked one the other day. She said, I want to get these kids to school. I want to get them to school on time. We have a dedicated staff from the office, the drivers, the monitors, the technicians who work on the vehicles, and we ought to be, I'm, I'm proud of them. I hope we're all just as proud of the job they do. Uh, 66 drivers started in 1819. 42 of them are still with us. That's pretty good numbers. Mm -hmm. Some we couldn't keep, physical, background check, a couple of them um, hit a couple things and we had to, or they left for better pay. And we had 40 who trained in 17, 18, and 20 in 16, 17. And over the summer, we lost 16, which was about 5 to 6% of the staff. Here's a telling slide. Um, our starting pay is 1576. Prince William is 1857. Spotsylvania is 1721 and Fauquier is 1698. And I know I'm over time. 
and now I'm feeling nervous, no, no, but no, no, I know I'm good. over you're time. Good. You're good. We appreciate But I had a discussion there. at the end service meeting with one of our 17-year drivers, and she said, hey, I applied in Prince William, and she lives pretty doggone close to Prince William, and when all the pay stuff came around, people, told, people said, oh, nobody's going to leave here to go drive for Prince William. It's too much of a, of a drive. Well, I worked in Prince William. I know I had at least 15 people from here who were driving up there. And, but this particular driver talked to me at lunch at the end service. She said, Prince William is offering me, I think it was $23, $24 an hour. <clears throat> she said, I've been here 17 years and I'm making 17 whatever the, and some change. She said, I'm seriously considering it. What, I, what was I gonna say? I said, I would too, if it's for the betterment of your family. Good driver too, comes to work and takes care of the children. So I just thought this slide was, address. what's that? <laughs> yeah, you go. but I just thought this slide was sort of telling here. And uh, if you, and I will say, if you go online, and I don't understand this, but uh, Spotsylvania, if you go online and look at theirs, it's still 15 and some change. I checked, I, I texted their director the other day, said, hey, what are you paying? He said, 1721, don't pay any more than me. And, <laughs> and we did call their HR to confirm the 1721. All right, retention challenges, once a month pay versus every two weeks. I know that sounds simple, but it's, it's a big thing. When a trainee comes to us, they can go up to six weeks before they get a paycheck. And we're asking them to quit their job, come in, train with us at minimum wage until you touch the wheel of a bus. And then we have some difficulties with um, contracting. This is where we stand. We're about 13 FTE short on the drivers. And I think the monitors is the telling thing because their, their pay jumped significantly a couple of years ago. And you'll notice how many FTEs we need there and we have a lot of extras. Now on these 13, we do have people we're getting ready to contract. I'll keep Chris and Dr. Kisner up to date on how many that we do have. Recruiting, we, go to, we put out flyers at all the elementary schools, businesses, trunk or treat, national night out, the radio ads, newspaper ads, message boards, and Cherie's department does a lot to help us in getting the message out, they're a big help. Ways to contact us. We have the MyStop app. If you have children, you can find your bus. Issue registry, we put this in place. Uh, a few years ago, the, uh, there was a crash, you all probably saw about it in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where six students were killed on a bus. And one of the recommendations that the NTSB made after the um, crash was that they had, there were all kinds of complaints about this driver and nothing was ever followed up. So we have this now and it tells us where we are with whether something has been dealt with, what's, you know, is it, what do we need to do to close it out? And we can keep numbers on that. And that's it. Let, let me just add one thing. We transport <coughs> over, over 17,000 children a day. How many buses, Barry, about 260 on the road? Uh, each day there's about 220, 225 on the 225 road. buses. If you do 17,000 times two trips back and forth, times 180 days, we transport over 6 million children through Stafford. Obviously, there's duplicate counts. And everyone knows the roads. I don't have to tell you the roads. I just want to mention one other comment. Today, I, today after today, I did eight car and bus duties. And first of all, not only the bus staff, terrific, the teachers, the teacher assistants and principals and anybody helping out with car and bus duty get my uh, greatest accolades. But there are some schools that truthfully are designed so horrible for bus and car traffic. So for example, today I was at Gale. The cars coming in mean the buses can't come in. And the bus cars going out means the buses can't come in. So some of the delays we're seeing is truly architecturally designed. And, and I mean, I could give you, you know it, because you know your schools. So we're working, uh, you know, different principals of um, Stafford Middle School, 
uh, Park Ridge. We're trying to figure out ways where we could flow the cars and flow the buses and, of course, make sure those schools that are walking schools that the kids get safe. So I just want to say it's much more complex than I think people recognize. But the number that he stated today, <coughs> I, I want, again, thank you um, and your staff, everybody. F to, in one day, we reduced it by 45 minutes. Okay. And I will just say this, and then I really will be quiet. The second day of school, you tend to have a lot more kids on the bus because a lot of parents on the first day want to drop their children off. And the other thing I do want to say, which you know as parents and school board members, our, because I, I witnessed this so much in the last two days, we double and triple check to make sure kids get in the right car with their parents and on the right school bus. That does slow it down, but it's the right thing to do. So the barometer I'm using, the measurement I'm using the first seven to 10 days or maybe two weeks is safety, that everybody gets where they need to get to. Um, uh, and time will work its way out. So I just, you know, again, I'm just sharing what you already know. Um, but I, when you think about 17,000 children, and then when you get your emails, please put that number in perspective. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Egan. Um, first of all, Thank you. Sure. Um, I, I, I know we shortened the summer on you, so that made things a little bit challenging. We also did a redistricting, which made things twice as challenging. So I know you've been getting emails and angry parents and maybe some angry staff members. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, I just want to say thank you, and thank you to the staff, too. Um, you guys are, have been troopers, and I know you're doing everything you can to fix some of the issues that we have. Um, I do have a couple of questions um, about, you talked a little bit about special needs buses. Are we getting any assistance financially? Maybe Chris, you can answer this. Um, I, know, I know Head Start, we get Head Start dollars for Head Start buses. Do we get any help at all from the state with the special needs uh, transport? Not that I'm aware of. Special, as you know, um, special ed is a related service. Right. So that's our, that's our responsibility. So we don't get any extra dollars for community okay um, maybe Chris is another question for you the new um, financial system I thought that we would be able to do twice a month um, payroll with the new system is that not true and dr. Kisner can attest that he's asked me about 20 times since he's um, been here in about a year so um, no we can um, it takes still Yes, it, we can. It is something that the system is fully capable of doing, and we can be in a position to do. But um, it's going to take time time for that transition, and it's going to take some staffing. Um, and, uh, you know, because it's not necessarily taking half amount of work and doing it first half of the month, half, and then taking the other half and doing the second half, because it's pretty much the same amount of work. Now you're doing it twice a month. A little bit of that is, is not true. You know, we have some hourly work that's not going to be duplicate. But it's still the same number of employees we have to process, the reporting we have to do. Um, for taxes and, and the wires. So a lot of it is just duplicate work that we're now we're having to do twice a month. Um, so within my department, we've talked about this a lot too, and it's something that we can um, add some staff to, but we have to be more strategic about how we impact the schools when we do that because we rely a lot on the information from school and admin staff to provide okay. us um, that information. C can we add this to our discussions on Saturday, the 24th, or, or kick it to so FAB, or whatever the, it is, because... The, the list is open. Yeah, because I think this is... Okay, so... I, I couldn't... Fall, if you can write that down for them. I so couldn't survive... You can go under budget priority. As a single yeah. parent, I couldn't survive getting one paycheck a month, and God right. bless you all for doing it, because I don't know how you're doing it. I, I would lose my mind. And my house. <laughs> so, yeah, let, let's see if we can... Yeah, can can I that. comment on that? Uh, are you, are you that I'm not again? finished yet. Let's, but oh, if it's a question Okay, related. I just wanted to comment related. Yeah. I, I, can I comment related to what I, um, Ms. Egan? Can you hold it until she finishes? Or? But it's, it's a re We're going to have an open discussion. All right, we'll have it open. I, I was trying to let one person yeah, I was just answering your question okay. as to. Okay, go ahead. Um, the. It's in reference to what she's referring Oh, um, getting back to the school buses. Um, for. Okay. The private day school, are we transporting for private day school as well, or is that being taken care of by the county? Uh, we, we do that transport. Okay. Are we getting any assistance from the Board of Supervisors? Because that is a county program. It's not, it's not a school program. It's no, we do not. not that I'm aware of. Hmm. 
Okay, another topic for discussion. <laughs> and then the last one, um, I received a message from a constituent down at Marlboro Point, and she reminded me that we had said that there weren't going to be any students on the buses any longer than an hour. And I'm not talking about buses breaking down or anything else like that. I'm talking distance from, from the pickup point to the time that they get to the school with, with no issues, with you know, no traffic or anything else like that. Um, she had informed me that it looked like some, some of the kids down there are between Marlboro Point and Stafford L are on the bus for like an hour and a half. Okay. And if you could just check on that for me and let me know if that's the case and if so, we need to have a further discussion because I do remember during the redistricting that we said that we weren't be, there weren't gonna be any kids on the buses longer than an hour, so okay. for, in, in regular circumstances. Right. Okay, so. I'll check on that. Okay. So that's all I have. Thank Ms. you. Young. You could go down the line because I was going to refer to an answer what you question she had. No, we go down the line. I'm okay. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't have. Go ahead. Down the line. I, I, Your turn, Mr. McOsker. I move my time to Ms. Young. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need too much time. Dr. Chase. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I was walking around my neighborhood yesterday and running into lots of families with little <clears throat> kids waiting for the bus. And um, Everybody's pretty happy. The uh, bus was 25 minutes late, but everybody kind of understood that it was the first week of school, and that's what the first week of school looks like. So I know you're hearing a lot from, from people who are upset, but there are a lot of people who are certainly very understanding of how it goes the first week or two of school. Thank you. Um, thank you. Oh, my mic's been on the whole time. <laughs> Mr. Sutta, thank you for everything you do and your staff and your department. I know that it's challenging at times, but we appreciate you so much. I have a question. I've always wondered when we bought these tr these activity buses, I'm curious to know if there's a uh, benefit to having an actual activity bus versus buying a regular school bus that can be used for routes and also activities? Well, and that when the, the yellow activity buses were purchased. They were purchased with under storage. You can get that on the yellow buses too, just like you can um, doing the white or whatever color you decide to paint an activity bus. And would bus. they then be able to be used for they, routes? Yes. It seems like a better use of our money to Absolutely, me. absolutely, because I mean, while the white buses are nice and they look good, you know, and you see divisions that have them painted maroon and blue and everything That's else, great. you can't use them to pick up students. Yeah, agreed. Um, so uh, the only other thing I'll say is um, we must do better, I, and I think that we can do better for you and, and your staff, um, and, and when we have this pri budget priority discussion, um, we really do need to prioritize some of these things. There are a few things um, that, that are up there that I've seen year after year now, and that shouldn't be happening, and so I apologize for that. And I just wanted to say thank you as well. I, you know, I've received emails. I refer them on to Dr. Kisner, but I want you to know that everyone, I've told them how ha hard your staff is working, um, you know, to, to address the, the, the problems that come up and, and what a challenge it is uh, just, just generally doing what you, what you do. So I have, I have full confidence that they will get worked out. And you know what, I ask people to, you know, to you know, ha have patience and give us a couple weeks to get, you know, all this earned out. It's, uh, it's not anything new. It happens, you know, every year. There's new things come up, as you point out. You know, somebody registers the, the day before school starts. It's hard to, you know, to, to get that in the schedule. And I also appreciate you addressing the safety issue because I think you know, of, of everything we deal with, that is, you know, the, the number one charge that's, is, that's is to keep our students safe. And sometimes it may take a little longer. Um, and, and certainly we, that's, that's not ideal, and I, I agree with Ms. Egan. We, we said that you know, our, our, our target was no, no runs more than an hour, and I think that was a commitment that we made, so hopefully we'll be able to um, have the resources to, to, to make that happen. But thank you for everything you do, and please thank pass you. that along to your staff. I will. And we, we appreciate you being here because I know you must be exhausted. No. <laughs> uh, thank you.
Thank you, Baron. Well, that, right. the thank you, Madam Chair, that keeps on giving is the pay raise for the bus drivers. Well, that's the thank you that just keeps got, on giving. We've got the fab sitting here, and we're right. going to talk about budget priorities a week from Saturday. So there, there you go. And it's uh, it's it's interesting that Spotsylvania is actually paying more than it's on their website because yes. when we do our little research, we're going to be usually looking at you right. know looking at that. So. But we don't, we don't want to let Spotsylvania know they have it wrong. Well, I, I, I think <laughs> somehow the, the word may get out, but... Yeah, they know now. <laughs> that's all right. That, that, that's important, and, and I appreciate all that background information. That was, that was really that was good, good education for, uh, good. For, for the board as well as the, you know, the, the public. All right, that brings us to citizen comments. Yep. Dr. Chase. Sure. Individuals wishing to comment at this time may do so by responding to the general invitation of the board. Speakers shall identify themselves by name, address, and organizational affiliation if the spokesperson represents an organization. Speakers shall also announce the purpose or topic of their comments. Three minutes shall be allotted to speakers. The chairwoman reserves the right to restrict the total citizen comment received at any particular meeting to a predetermined maximum number of minutes with the approval of the board. Citizen comment which is profane, <coughs> abusive, or which threatens eminent physical harm shall be ruled out of order by the chairwoman. Although the board provides the opportunity for citizen comment, individuals desiring to register complaints against division employees or division programs, services, or activities may also utilize the procedures outlined in Stafford County Public School Policy 1113 public complaints. Okay, we have four speakers that have signed up. I'm going to read those names, and when those four finish, if there's anyone else who is, wishes to address the board, please come forward. And uh, you can sign up on the, um, the sign-up sheet on the, the podium there after you give us your comments. The first speaker is Al Watkins. The second is Matt Sutton. The third is Jeffrey Trigger. And the fourth is Steve Giannopoulos. Good members, <laughs> good, good start. Uh, good evening, members of the board, Dr. Kistner. My name is Alan Watkins. I am a teacher at Colonial Forge High School. I'm a member of the SEA. I live on Hope Road here in Stafford, but basically I'm speaking for myself here this evening. Uh, a little refresher, lest we forget. At last month's lone school board meeting, a few members seem uncomfortable in rising to support proposed policies of non-discrimination and of equal opportunity for both students and for staff members. Under pressure from a few dissenters, the board deferred a vote that would have inclusively provided necessary support for all members of Stafford schools. While still, excuse me, while school started yesterday with those policies not in place. If I may, I'd like to use the remainder of my time to speak about what this board, led by those few dissenters, has accomplished since that last meeting to show that they really did truly do support all students and staff members. Nothing. You've done nothing. Now almost another month, of noth month, another month of nothingness will pass before you decide at next month's school board meeting what you should be doing and what should already be in place. Please do the right thing. Not a 
folks. Matt Sutton, Embry Mill. Um, I live over in coastal Garrisonville district. Um, I am representing a small chunk of Embry Mill, like about a quarter of it right now. It's funny that uh, we're talking about transportation. I know that was going to be on tonight because that's what I'm here for. Um, there was an unintended consequence that uh, this board didn't see, the consultants didn't see or anything else, but when you all redistricted and you blew Embry Mill over to Park Ridge and then refused to alter, modify, or cancel the pilot program, you hosed up some bus routes. Now, the pilot program is effectively dead. Uh, the pilot program between Whiting Creek and Park Ridge was that they would share buses because there's bus shortages and school, school bus driver shortages, and I get all that, and this isn't a knock on the transportation people. They're doing what they can do. But because of the way it was redistricted, they can now only share two buses. So the whole point of the pilot program is that Whiting Creek starts early, ends early. They run their buses. Those buses go to Park Ridge, who then starts late, ends late, and there's only one bus load. And all our kids are getting home at reasonable times within, you know, a few minutes of it and everything else. Well, that's not happening. There's only two buses being shared. My kids' bus route and the people that live in my section on that bus 140 are now looking at an expected time, arrival time home when school gets out at 3.50 of about 5, maybe 5.15 p.m. until they can hire another bus driver. Now, I know they're trying to get a bus driver on a route, but we don't have a bus driver. And the answers that we got today from this transportation all over was, there's nothing we can do until we get a new bus driver um, assigned to your route, and your bus that runs your kids goes North Stafford, Poole, Moncure, delivers Moncure, then goes all the way to Park Ridge, picks up our kids, and drives them home. So it's a two and a half mile distance, and my kids get out at 350, and they're not going to be getting home till 5 or 515 till whenever a bus driver gets hired. Um, so when we redistricted, we told you it was not a good idea to send us to Park Ridge. You did it anyway, despite all of that. We then came and begged for you to look at, switch the um, pilot program around, put Park Ridge on the early schedule to give some kind of an accommodation Emory Bell, nothing. We asked about canceling the pilot program. We told, no, the principals all want the pilot program. The Park Ridge, you know, the parents all want the pilot program to stay where it is. And yet this is a consequence of what's going on. Now we've got kids that, yeah, they're not sitting on the bus for an hour. I'll give you that but they're sitting in the classrooms. You've got teachers now working an hour or whatever um, outside of contract, and I get it's only day two. Day one, I'm going to forgive it, and if they had said, hey, this is just working out some glitches and all that, I've worked in this county. I get it. It takes time to work some of this stuff out, but that's not what we were told. The pilot program isn't in effect. They're not sharing buses. They can't do it because of the redistricting and where all the kids got zoned into Winding Creek now have too long of a distance, and as such, we're stuck um, dealing with this situation until hopefully we get a bus driver assigned to us. So please take it back, look at it, see what you can do about it. Maybe it can fix for next year. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Trigger and I live in the George Washington District. Uh, this year is the start of some new adventures. A new school for me, a new grade level, a new start time, new students, and a new administration. I can honestly say that this was for the best. The first seven days have been the best opener I've ever had since earning my contract here in Stafford County Public Schools. And I still get to do the red for red, although I didn't wear jeans, it's a little hot today. During the work week, our administration took us to Funland as a community building activity, a wonderful way to start the year. And then our principal, our principal told us his story about why he does what he does. He never once talked about data. He talked about kids. And he challenged us all to state our why. Why do we do what we do? His speech ended with a standing ovation from everyone in the staff. It was amazing, and I'm, I'm getting kind of choked up thinking about it. My why is too long for a three-minute speech, but in summary, it's because I love enriching those students in the classroom. Later on in the week, we sat down as a staff, and the principal told us that we are an inviting and inclusive building. A student's background, sexual orientation, and gender identity should play no detrimental part in how we educate, enrich, and empower our classes. He doesn't know how much those words mean to me as an educator. 
I would also like to take a minute to thank you, Dr. Kisner, for talking to me about why I speak meeting after meeting after meeting about a policy that I'm obviously trying to get passed. Now, as an educator, it would be obvious that I'm going to ask the board a question. What is your why? Why did you run for this position? I'm hoping that you can quickly come to a short answer. However, I want you to think about your answer, your why, over the next couple of days, maybe even weeks. For what reason do you, why do you, why do, you do this? It should include the right to empower, enrich, educate, and protect all students and staff. Unfortunately, we have students and staff at every level in the school system who don't have full protections. I'm hoping that the questions you had at the last school board meeting were answered by a lawyer. I'm also hoping that you have integrity behind your words when you said you were going to vote on this discrimination policy on September the 10th. As educators, we have the ability to create a world filled with hope and wonder when we're on the bus, in the cafeteria, in the library, in central office, and in the classroom. By vote, you, the board members, are educators. Make sure your choices reflect what you want the students to have. Make sure your why is an answer that is good for everyone in Stafford County Public Schools. Hi, my name is Steve Giannopoulos and I live next door to the new Ann Moncure Elementary School. And I've got issues, I've got pre-construction issues, I've got construction issues, which I won't burden here for that, but I do have some post-construction issues. And that is the parking on, on Juggins Road, which given the first two days, I understand that there are possibilities where that would happen. But one of the things that w I was assured of was that there was going to be plenty of parking on the grounds of the school that this would not happen. My second issue is on the lighting. The, the lights that are on now shine right into my house. I can't even sleep at night because all the glare, even by shutting the blinds, I got metal blinds, but the outskirt of it, they're so powerful that they still come through. That probably would not have happened if the buffer that I was told was going to be left between my property and the school's property was, would have left. I would, probably wouldn't have this issue right now because the trees would have been left up. Right now, I've got a very narrow form of trees that's blocking some of the lighting. But that's going to change here in a, in a couple of months. And then I'm going to be stuck. So something needs to be addressed with the lighting. And I believe I also spoke to uh, your office about it um, several months ago about various issues. But this is one of the post issues. The second post issue I have is on the marquee sign. That marquee sign was never on the initial plans to be on the side entry. It was always on the main entrance to the school. Okay, it was placed on the side entry which I guess is okay, but it shines, instead of it directing into the road, it directs right into my property, because the way the road is curved. It, it shines directly to the master bedroom window. And the marquee part of it isn't even lit yet. So when it starts changing colors and, and, and lettering, I could see what kind of nightmare that's gonna be for me as well. And the third thing is the sign for the bus entry right turn here's for the buses can you put it any closer to the property line i mean i don't live in a commercial street i used to have a private quiet street until the school came in into place and now it, everything is looking so commercialized and this ugly looking sign being one foot away from my property line and i and i brought it up to their attention before they put it up and i was told well we're going to put it up now anyway and, and we can change it later. Well, I know how the later comes because I'm still having pre and post construction issues. So I don't want to take it as a complaint. I just want to bring it to y'all's attention and see what we can do to resolve these items. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? Please come forward.
How you doing? My name's Shannon Spillman. I'm actually with the Garrisonville District, and I want to read something that my wife wrote. Um, I'm here to speak about a situation that my wife brought up to the school board last night. We had several concerns about our special needs son after seeing photos of him being dropped off right next to the drop-off lane at the new North Star. Okay? Within min uh, Walking between cars is what was happening. He was getting dropped off walking between cars. Within minutes of Dr. Kessner replying to my wife, it was changed. Shouldn't have took that, though. But it did, and my wife wanted to tell, me, tell you thank you for that. That was awesome. You replied the fastest. We also had some issues with some of the replies that we got before, or actually after your reply. Um, the school wasn't ready. There was other things like that. It was bad. Your architecture thing was spot on, 100% spot on. It's a bad design. Um, but we wanted to thank you for your quick response. It's been kind of beat up you guys today from what I've seen, and that's not cool. Um, we happily watched our son get dropped off today. My wife followed the bus and watched him get dropped off, and he was dropped off in the back today. So thank you for that. That was, that was an amazing thing. I do have issues with the pickup line there. It's... It, Every last year he was in special needs and he went to Garrisonville for it. They do a number system, okay? You got a number that gets on your car. That number's associated to your son, daughter, whatever. The teacher knows or the person doing that drop off that that's where they need to go. Why, for the life of me, do I need to get out of my car, sign my, for my child, after they've been dismissed, to watch the teacher run back, not once, not twice, three times before my child gets picked up. That's crazy. When we have better systems in play, it works. It works at Garrisonville. I can tell you right now, I pick up my son every Wednesday from school last year. Every Wednesday I did it. It took me a total of 10 minutes from the time I pulled into the school to leave. That's outstanding. Now, granted, I got there early, so it's probably more like three minutes, four minutes, because the military guy in me always shows up early. Um, I actually wanted to run for school board, because I think you guys are a little out of touch with your people that you represent. Um, we didn't know about North Star being done on Sunday for their open house. There wasn't a letter sent out that we got. We didn't get an email. We didn't get anything like that. You know how we found out? We have a little social group on Facebook that just so happened to have somebody that was on Twitter, and you sent it out by Twitter. I don't tweet. I think my time's up, unfortunately. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you could sign in, please, sir. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll close the citizen comment period. Come to the board for board comments. Mr. Cater, would you like to start us? I suppose so. Uh, I'll start by addressing the, the speakers about Moncure. We've had uh, some emails going out today uh, uh, that Dr. Kisner responded to, as he always does very quickly, and I appreciate that. Uh, we're going to be looking into it, taking care of it. I think I got an email from one of your neighbors as well. Um, so that light, you know, we definitely want to take care of it and see how we can make that uh, better for you guys uh, and be good neighbors now that we're there, and I do apologize for that. I um, just want to tell the board what a tremendous, uh, I said it at the ribbon-cutting ceremony for Moncure. I'm just so impressed, truly. I know that there have been, you know, a lot of issues and setbacks and things that we've been dealing with, but to have Moncure and, um, and North Star, quite frankly, open before the start of the school year is just very impressive. I'm very proud of uh, you, Dr. Kisner, and all of your staff members. I think that shows incredible leadership um, and teamwork, and I just, I, I couldn't be more proud of you guys. It's a, a beautiful school. Um, the children there are so blessed to have that facility, and, and I hope you guys get a chance to go by and see it. It was a beautiful ceremony. Thank you guys to those of you who set it up. Um, 
was not what I expected. I was told there would not be a podium. Uh, but no, anyways, uh, it was beautiful. Welcome back to school, everybody. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic school year, and I'm really looking forward to uh, making some strides this year towards uh, you know a lot of the things that we've been talking about and uh, getting some new priorities going and, and just making some real strides towards uh, fixing some things that we've been seeing going on for too long. Thank you. Ms. Young? Am I allowed to talk? Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And yeah, um, I was there at the opening of Moncure. It's beautiful. I spent a lot of time there. I wanted to visit several schools, but I ended up staying there, hanging out with the staff and uh, a lot of the new um, students that came from Hampton Oaks and went to Moncure. So that was really special. Uh, selling t shirts and um, brushing up on my Spanish. I thought that was great. Uh, Dr. Kisner, um, coming in halfway in a year and in redistricting something that was not part of um, your doing, it was already going on, and um, to be able to pull that off in addition to um, early school year and you know, being able to go to the schools, every single school that you went to, I followed you. I thought I was going to be there before you had to it, but uh, you were there before me, so that was amazing. Um, you know, the community engagement that we talked about in the budget meetings, it's happening. Um, uh, North Star, I couldn't get there, but I also didn't know it was opening, so we need to do a little bit better with that. I mean, it, it's done. And you know what? We could complain all we want. Like you said, we put a lot of kids on the bus. Um, a lot of kids are in new schools, so that could also delay the progress, you know, people trying to find their way. So things are going to settle down, and we all are going to be okay. We have to remember it's about the students. It's about the children. And if we keep that focus, that, that would be great. Um, the, for the gentleman in the back, I remember seeing him um, in his yard, and so I figured that this was going to come up. So hopefully we could um, take care of those things for him, and uh, we'll go from there. And definitely uh, we need to talk about um, Ember Mill and the bus system that I thought that that was going to be resolved. So we'll, we'll see about that. Other than that, um, we didn't have the FAB, which is that Finance and Budget Committee meeting yesterday because – I wanted the staff to concentrate on the first day of school. And, um, you know, thank you, staff. Um, thank you, teachers, bus drivers, monitors, principals. Appreciate all the background help that you all have given to Dr. Kisner and um, loving up on the students. Um, it shows. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Young. Ms. Egan. I'm just going to say welcome back, everybody. Glad to have you here, and have a great year. Mr. McOsker. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'll say a few words tonight. Um, welcome back to the employees and the school leadership, um, and thanks for welcoming, welcoming the kids back. Um, I have a small idea of the prep work that goes into it on, in the classroom and then on the leadership side here in the building. and and all those folks in between, the service personnel. And so I have a small inclination, but it's probably not, not as near. Uh, I'm, probably not, I'm probably not giving you all enough credit because I know it starts way, way early in the summertime. Um, and we did have a very short summer, as we can see. Speaking of the short summer, um, just one issue I'd like to bring to Dr. Kisner's attention, uh, cooling our schools. Um, I understand that some schools may be turning off the AC um, during the weekends to save a couple of shekels, right? Um, I, I just talk to the staff and see if the juice is worth the squeeze on that. When you have a giant building and then you turn it off and then you turn it on early Monday morning, uh, it takes a lot of time for that uh, heat to dissipate uh, with the cool air, and sometimes it's 48 hours. So um, I'd, like you, I'd like you and the team to take a look at that. But let me talk a few minutes about leadership. Uh, we heard um, one of my very good constituents in the George Washington District speak tonight, and he, he has been speaking for years. 
uh, about the great things that are happening in the schools. Uh, leaders are leading. Principals are getting their people together and, and uh, talking to them. Not that that didn't happen before, but um, I'm, I'm actively hearing that now. Uh, they're empowering their employees to be active leaders in the school. And, and you know why? There's one, there's one major reason why that is, and that's why I joined the school board, is to get a guy like that in that seat right there. That's why I joined the board. You don't really take care of kids up here, sit here and shuffle papers back and forth and policy. That's not, that's, what, that's our job. But our job up here is to hire effective, caring leaders. And it pushes down to the 30, 31 schools that leadership and that vision. And it finally touches the kids at the tip of the spear in the classroom. You know, when you're not a leader, time is spent professionally developing yourself and focusing inward. But once you become a leader, time is spent focusing outward and professionally developing others. And that's what that man right there does on a daily basis. It's not about you doing great things as a leader. It's about getting others to do great things. And that's what that man right does on a daily basis. He pushes away from the desk. It's easy to sit in your office all day, call your senior staff up, start shuffling off taskers to them. I need you to do this. Tom, what the heck are you doing? I need you to do this. Grider, what are you sitting around for? That's not what a leader is supposed to be doing. You're supposed to push away from your desk, have those guys and gals do that paperwork, and you get out there and look at the leaders in the school. He checks the checkers. Things do, folks do things that are checked. That's just human nature. He checks the checkers. He gets out there. He says hello. And he gives guidance. He's a responsive leader. Whether it's complaints or praise, he responds, and he responds quickly. You all remember the last superintendent, and, and there's superintendents across the, the, the Commonwealth and the, and the states. They wouldn't answer one email, never, because it's foible. He's a responsive leader, and we heard that tonight on the podium. He tackles the tough issues, whether it's a tough personnel change or the non-discrimination policy that we asked for because of situations that happened in the school. He analyzes the issue and puts it forth. Talks to folks and then he makes the hard decision. You might not like the decision, but he makes one. Dr. Kisner is great for Stafford County and he's great for our kids. It's a tough job, Stafford County. This school board's tough. The board of supervisors are tough. Taskmasters. We need to keep this guy here. Lastly, he's a mensch. Okay? He's a mensch. He's a good person. He truly cares about the folks that he's interacting with on a daily basis. The teachers, his employees, but most importantly, our kids. Let's keep this guy around. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Chase. All right, well, that's a hard act to follow, but um, I also want to just welcome everybody to the school year and uh, say happy first week of school. Um, I want to thank Dr. Kisner, uh, Quentin Sullivan, and all the staff in facility planning, design, and construction who were involved in getting the new Moncure Elementary and North Star Early Childhood Education Center up and running for the first day of school. Uh, Dr. Kisner and I met last September to talk about priorities for his first year. And I noted that opening these two buildings on time was a priority. Uh, I remember Conway Elementary not opening until November and Stafford High School opening two weeks late. Uh, when I visited Moncure in April, I was a little worried. Uh, but Dr. Kisner started showing up at Moncure site at random times to make sure people were working. Uh, when there was no one there on Father's Day, he was there on Father's Day, and he called the contractor and asked why no one was there. So I'm really glad that uh, it opened on time, and I want to thank our county administrator, Tom Foley, for asking county inspectors to work with us and expedite inspections. Uh, the county staff was extremely supportive. Um, I know that there's still a lot of work at both buildings, punch lists, 
from what I understand, but uh, it was a real team effort. Um, I also want to thank staff for handling the situation at Falmouth Elementary School with redistricting. Um, we had a uh, little glitch in um, the projections, and so Falmouth was going to open at 95% capacity after, after this redistricting, and I was very glad that staff was able to come up with a solution um, that, that fixed that. Um, and then uh, I wanted to just say something. Um, I, I know sometimes when you're looking at the board from the outside, you may think we don't do anything. Um, but uh, Chairwoman Healy and I did meet with the attorney, and we had a very uh, good conversation about what the board was looking for and what questions we wanted answered. And she is working on putting that together, and it's our understanding that we will get that um, on August 24th. And um, we may have a meeting on September 3rd, if necessary, to get more questions answered in advance of September 10th. So I do believe this board is committed to having that vote on September 10th, and we are trying to, to get the information. So just wanted to give you that update. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Um, I want to welcome back all our employees who are, have with, were with us last year and welcome the new employees that we have a significant number of uh, here. Uh, the, the new Teacher Institute was a wonderful experience, and I, I think everyone was uh, very energized and excited to be with Stafford County. I, I know we were all very grateful to, to have them, so thank you, Dr. Kisner, for putting that on and, and your staff. Um, also, just wanted to, to thank the principals in the Rock Hill District. I did my annual um, visit of my, the six schools that are, are in the district on the first day of school, and the enthusiasm was just amazing. And I'm sure it's an example of throughout the county. In fact, I live very close to North Stafford. Even though it's in the Garrisonville district, I could hear that big blue band, <laughs> you know, going. It, um, of course, I, I had already been to the gym and back by the time, you know, they started. But uh, <laughs> I didn't get a chance to stop by. But I, I look forward to hearing them on, uh, on Friday nights for football games as well. They, they, they are a community band, I consider, I consider them. Big Blue. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I know we, we had a lot of excitement at, at North and um, thank Ms. Johnson for uh, you know, being able to highlight one of our schools. And, and I think we will receive a lot of uh, positive uh, response from, from not just this community but from outside the, the community for, for what we were able to show about our schools. But just, just being at the schools, seeing the, the staff so excited with their welcome back signs and we missed you and the, the music and the, the, the dancing, the, the, just the smiles, um, whether it's the, the, the car riders or the bus riders or you know, whatever, it was, it, it was, it was amazing. Uh, and, and I know at, at, at Brent they put those stickers on the, the kids as they got off the bus to make sure. And I said, you know, they got on the bus. I said, what happens if the stickers falls off? They said, not a problem. We check periodically during the day to make sure those stickers are still on those, uh, those children so that they're getting on, on the right bus. And, and I, I do want to also thank our parents who, who are uh, showing patients, um, you know, with us as we work through the, the, the transportation issues. I, I, I cannot imagine what Mr. Suddeth and his staff, um, you know, have done thus far and will continue to do to get our children to school, you know, back and forth safely. And as, as I mentioned to him, I'm so pleased to hear that safety is the number one priority because we could be the fastest uh, in, the, in the state or, or even the, the nation, but if we're not looking at safety, then that's, you know, that, that's no good. But so thank you, thank you to everyone for the, the wonderful welcome back to the students. And I do expect it will be a great year for the staff and the students. And I think people are already looking forward to the uh, end of school before Memorial Day. <laughs> I, I, I mentioned to Dr. Stemple when I was up at Mountain View, it seems like I was just here for graduation <laughs> and here we are starting school. But that's, it, it's exciting whenever it starts. And, and, and I, I was very, very happy that we don't have 100 degree temperatures this yeah, week. It was a beautiful day, you know, uh, weather-wise to, to start school and, and hopefully that will continue um, through the September um, timeframe. Dr. Kisner, okay. superintendent comments. I, 
and I do want to, first of all, thank you for the kind comments. So I've had a chance, um, just to echo what has already been said, I've had a chance after, um, yesterday and today to visit 14 schools, and, and I have to tell you, uh, the excitement is there, staff are great, but I also had a chance to talk to many parents, because I intentionally go on the uh, car ride line, and it does two things. It lets parents to share some of their issues, and also, um, you know, get to know me. And I, I just would say um, that overall, that there is a very positive um, trend happening in our school system. So I do want to thank you as a board and everyone that works for us. As mentioned before, I, I just want to quickly mention, I did go to the North Stafford Open House, and I apologize for that gentleman that he did not, was not aware of it. It was really well attended. Um, we had a backup of, uh, of parents trying to get in, and it was a lot of little kids, and we had the Head Start Advisory Council, and um, it, it was an exciting, uh, it was last Sunday, and um, again, we're gonna have the ribbon cutting at the end of September, I believe, and because there's still a lot of things that we need to uh, you know, get resolved there, but the kids are happy, and the staff seem um, very exciting. At, as already mentioned, at Montreux, we do have a punch list. It's very typical, after a building project is completed, that there's still work that needs to take place. We believe most of the work will be completed through uh, the month of September, but we would not be surprised if they're there for next, you know, maybe October, November. And I'll just give you a very quick idea of what still needs. Well, they're completing some of the HVAC uh, systems right now. Um, they're still painting some areas of the building. Wood wrap around the library, maker space, stage, and cafeterias, um, they're doing that. They're re uh, finishing up some door hardware and um, classroom AV, audio visual. So th these contractors know how to do it where they don't disrupt student learning. And um, I'm glad you mentioned Quentin. I want to make sure I mention Bryce. Uh, Bryce has been the uh, uh, person, our project manager, that's been on site uh, truly seven days a week, and he's still there, and he's um, managing this punch list um, process. And when I know more about uh, North Stafford, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, North Star, I'll let you know um, that update. I do also want to mention, I was planning tonight, but Truthfully, I would not be doing you a service um, to give you the first two days of enrollment, but the numbers fluctuate so much. They, they've gone up and down, and we're gonna have to expect that for the next few weeks. Um, I think there's, there's two scenarios. One, that some families that are moving into Stafford may not get here till like Labor Day. You know, most people north of us are still, um, you know, they usually start after Labor Day. And then we have children that might have left, but did not, let us know, and we won't officially know until another school system seeks their records. So we are seeing some fluctuation, um, and, and that will continue, and that's truly not unusual. Harrisonburg, we always open up before Labor Day, and we saw that um, usually a few days after Labor Day. So, um, but our staff is adjusting, and uh, HR is working um, with the principals and others to making sure that we're staying with the class size reduction. We, as you, I told you yesterday, oh, yeah, I think I emailed you yesterday, um, we still have 50 openings. Um, uh, I talked to Patrick before the meeting. You know, we're, we're interviewing people. We're now scrubbing our sub list to see if people are hiding that they have a teaching license. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and see if there's some teachers positions. Um, you saw the data I sent you yesterday, and you have to just put things in perspective. We did date to date. So last year, on, on August 12th, uh, we were not in session, but our vacancy rate was about the same number. Of course, this year, we were in session on August 12th, so it's been a little bit more of a challenge. Um, we have a lot of subs, we have good subs. HR is also working to get people provisionally licensed. Um, so um, I, d I just want to let you know that there are 50 openings, and I will email you by Friday um, where those, I, you have in the aggregate, but give you more specific, so you'll get a sense from the schools where they are. Just give HR a couple more days to get that um, put together. Beyond that, I'm just saying this is gonna be uh, a terrific year, and we're gonna, um, you know, I know you're going to do a consent agenda, and then I have a couple of people I just want to welcome as new employees of uh, Stafford Schools. Thank you. 
Okay, so do you have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Dr. Chase, second by Ms. Young. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimously. Dr. Okay, Chase. thank you. Uh, I wanna thank her for being here. Um, I want to introduce, and you have to stand up so you can be embarrassed that thousands of people are going to watch all you. <laughs> <laughs> millions, millions. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Teresa Lewis, has uh, started the new assistant principal for Drew Middle School. Dr. Lewis served as a secondary educational specialist in Arlington County prior to assuming this role. While in Arlington, she also served as an ELA English, um, uh, you know, English as a second language specialist, she was an interim assistant principal and supervisor of Office of, of Minority Achievement. Um, she earned her bachelor's degree from Spelman College, a master's of arts degree in English and English education from the University of Thou South Florida, and a PhD in curriculum instruction from the University of Florida. Welcome to it, and you want to... Bienvenidos. Anybody want to introduce? Uh, this is my husband. <laughs> Okay. All right, very good. All right, so uh, a person that I believe you already know, but I just want to make sure everyone's aware of his new title, his new responsibilities. Dr. George Hummer has assumed the position of Executive Director of Student Services and Special Education. Uh, prior, he's been our Supervisor of Student Services since 2015. He was Assistant Principal of Rodney Thompson Middle School. Um, he began his teaching career in Spotsylvania County. Um, he has uh, earned his bachelor's degree uh, in Radford. He earned his master's degree in special education and ed leadership from uh, Mary Washington. And he earned his doctorate in ed leadership from VCU. So I think it's, he's going to be terrific. <laughs> One person I know that's not here, but I know we're all very excited. He'll be starting at the end of this week or coming at the end of this um, uh, Mr. John Anderson, he will be assuming the role of Executive Director of Facilities. He comes to Stafford from Kennesaw, Georgia, where for 11 years he's served as the Assistant Vice President of Facilities for Kennesaw State University. It's a large university, over 30,000 students. I forgot how many buildings, but a lot of buildings. Um, he has a very impressive uh, resume. Uh, he holds a BS and Master's in Architect. He's a licensed architect, both from Georgia Tech. So we'll... we'll Caitlin, yeah. No, okay, and just one person I just really want to mention. She's already in our school system. Uh, Caitlin uh, Sokoli has assumed the position of teaching and learning facilitator for world language and culture. Recently, she was a Spanish teacher at Stafford High School. She began her teaching career at Brook Point High School, and she taught at Prince William County Schools. So we're very excited to have her. Thank you, Dr. Kisner. That brings us to action items 9.01, appointment of a school board member to serve as liaison to the Head Start Policy Council for the term of September 2019 through August 2020. And um, Ms. Hazard has indicated that she would be willing to continue that if she were uh, nominated, but she did ask approved. for a, a backup uh, just in case, you know, she's not available at some point. Move so to approve. Ms. Egan, that's, that, that's a motion to appoint Ms. Yes. Hazard. All right. Second. Do we have a second? Uh, motion by Ms. Egan, second by Ms. Decatur. Any discussion? I say thank you to Ms. Hazard. <laughs> Me too. All right. Uh, do we have a, any um, volunteers for backup? I'll, I'll be in the. Okay. The thank you. All right. So can we uh, include that in the motion? That Ms. Uh, Decatur will be the, the, the alternate. Sorry, Ms. Egan, I'm sure it's okay, okay. with you. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and, and Ms. Hazard thanks you as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, 9.02, approval of an amended constitution and agreement for the joint operation of the Commonwealth Governor's School. Um, Dr. Chase, I'm going to ask you to address this, but first we need a motion and a, a second for discussion. Uh, move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion by Mr. McCosker, second by Ms. Egan. Dr. Chase, can you yeah. give us a so, little background? So basically these are just changes to dates to make things more reasonable. So uh, for example, the budget 
the date for them to bring the budget moves from December 1st to January 31st because that allows them more time to prepare a budget and have a better idea of what the needs of the governor's school are. Um, budget and finance, uh, they've moved when we would approve the budget from January 31st to May 31st, which makes quite a bit of sense given that we don't know what the budgets are in the different school divisions in January. Um, and then finally, uh, just changing when you need to, um, if, if, if a, um, whichever county is the physical agent, and it has been Spotsylvania County forever, but if they wish to change that, they would need to give one calendar year's notice rather than by February. So it was just changes in dates. Um, and uh, Ms. Grigsby, who's the director of the governor's school, wanted to be here, but her son had a concussion this afternoon. So she's been at the hospital with him. My. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Sure. All right, so we have a motion. Um, for approval, is there any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimously. That brings us to information items. In information item 10.01 and 10.02, uh, we've been requested to bring these to uh, action this evening, so we'll um, you know, entertain a motion for those two. And these are items that there was not adequate information to bring uh, forward at the last board meeting. The first one is 10.01, authorization for the school board chairperson to sign an agreement to participate in the Albemarle Regional Migrant Education Program. Uh, move to um, move this item to action, 10.01, to move it to action. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Dr. Chase, second by Mr. McOsker. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to move this 10.01 uh, to action, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do, do we have a motion on the action item now? Uh, move to approve um, the authorization for the school board chairperson to sign the agreement to participate in the Albemarle Regional Migrant Education Program. I'll second it for discussion. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion by Dr. Chase, second by Ms. Egan. Uh, discussion, Ms. Egan? Um, I don't understand this. <laughs> good, good yeah, plain and simple. I don't understand what this is. Good question. Frank. Okay, I, I maybe it's federally if you have a student that makes the status of a migrant. A migrant is a student that is in a family where parents move for temporary employment. And Albemarle, we don't have many children like that. I don't really want to get into specific because truthfully we just have one and I don't want to identify that child by a description. So Albemarle County is a fiscal agent and they would provide services, we would provide the services but they would be reimbursing us for the services if this child needed services while he or she was a student in Stafford County. School systems in the valley and other places where you have a lot of children whose parents might be working in the um, agriculture or, or poultry industry, we, they would have a lot of migrant children. Um, we, we t this part of the state tends not to have a lot of migrant children, so it doesn't really make sense for us to have a migrant department. Um, and Albemarle County is the encatchment area in which we would participate in. Okay. okay. Also, I'm just reading this. It says, you know, blah, 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 used to um, develop instructional programs and projects that ensure that migratory children who move among the states are not penalized in any manner, blah, blah, blah. So in here, there's a few different examples that might be helpful. And um, Yeah, I mean, I read it, and it's, it's still... Okay, sorry. I, yeah, I had to look up the definition for migrant because I had a different impression of what a migrant student was. Mm -hmm. But is there is there a... Uh, an expiration date for this agreement, and it, are we going to be updated if it, we actually grow with migrant children? I mean, how do we readdress this again? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you want to, yeah. Yes, it is for three years. They qualify three years. for three years, each family. And yes, we are, um, Albemarle will let us know if there are any more that register through them for us. And then if we grow to 10 families, then we can have our own department, okay. or we should have our okay. own. Okay, good. Perfect. That's all I needed. Anything else? Great. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. I have, I have one question. Um, 
if a migrant is disabled, uh, is that covered? Not under this, it's not. This is strictly for, um, wait, can you rephrase your question? Do, do you, you mean a migrant me? student? Migrant, migrant student. Special yes. if oh, if they're a totally special eligible. ed migrant student? Yes, yes, this will be covered, I'm sorry. Oh, I cover. misunderstood okay. your question. Yes, this, this is a situation where we can be reimbursed for services that we would be normally providing and that we can provide extra services at uh, the expense of this um, consortium Sorry. that we would not necessarily um, be able to provide. So there's no yeah, cost to extra. Stafford County for this, correct? There's none, and this is above and beyond any services that are provided to all kids. Thank you. Such as tutoring and anything else. Any other questions? No? All right. We have a motion for approval. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, the, the second item which has been requested to be moved for action is 10.02, award of a contract to Soliant Health, Inc. in the amount of $209,250 from FY20 budgeted operating funds for two school psychologists. I, I'd like to move this item to action, uh, award of a contract to Soliant Health, Inc. Second. Okay. Motion by Dr. Chase, second by Ms. Young. Any discussion about moving okay. it to action? Yeah. No? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All yep. opposed? All right. Now, do we have a motion for 10.0? Well, I guess it's 9.04 now. Yeah. I, I, I move that uh, 9.04, the award of a contract to Solient Health, Inc. in the amount of $209,250 from FY20 budgeted operating funds for two school psychologists be approved. All right. Motion by Dr. Chase. Second. Second by Ms. Young. Any discussion? Where, where will they reside? <laughs> what, that, what, in the front office here? Or? <laughs> where where, where do they reside, George? Are they in this building? Your building? Yeah, they, I just want to know. Are they just are a they school traveling? site? Are, are they, they traveling? Are they on call? Oh, you know. uh, no, they'll be, at, they'll be at that specific building. That will be part of the school site. Oh, okay. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Back to information items. Um, Ms. Hall, is this still 10.03 or is this now 10.01 since the other one's moved? It's still 10.03. Okay. I never quite get this, this numbering system. All right. 10.03, award of a contract to Tire Tread Service, Inc., in the amount of $470,000 from budgeted FY20 operating funds, and this will be coming back for the board for action at the next meeting. Are there any questions about this item? No? Uh, 10.04, approval of the FY21 budget development calendar. This also will be coming back to us at the next meeting, um, and we'll also be uh, discussing budget at our work session on the, the 24th. So if there's any uh, you know, questions anybody wants to raise, you can bring them with you to the work session. Um, 10.05, approval of the FY21 large capital project priorities. Any uh, discussion of this, e this evening for this item? Madam Chair, I would just like to say that on the 24th, I'd like to talk about, um, we do have a bunch of schools, a, a boatload of schools that don't have air condition in the kitchens. And so um, I, I'd like to see if we can talk about that on the 24th and to see how the board members feel about how, how, to, how to wedge possibly some of the large CIP money for something like that, if that's possible. That's all. Okay, thank you for bringing that up this evening. Mr. McOsker, uh, Dr. Kisner, if we could have some information about the cost, um, and I would do it by school in case we have to do a, uh, you know, a phased approach for that, that we could have that, that might be helpful for our discussion. Okay, any other questions, discussion? Yeah. Ms. Young. No, I'm, I'm looking at 10.5. We're not there yet, right? Are we yet? No, we're yeah. at 10.5. Yeah. 10 oh, okay, so I was looking at 1 through 7. Why do we have 2 and 6? Um, if I recall, was early childhood special ed phase 1 and 2? Why is Drew so low? I mean, Drew needs renovation. I don't understand why it's not higher, why, why it's not at the top of the list. Are these listed in any particular order? Yeah, they're, they're in priority order. I 
can, I can just observe that high school number six has been at the top of that list for years. Yeah. And it's still set for five years from now. So I think a couple of the things we talked about were um, capacity. Um, and then we looked at Hartwood and Drew, and we asked a lot of questions about this 92.38% um, um, versus the 66.43%. Um, and they kind of explained, we asked questions about the percentages. They explained that the higher the rating and the worse condition. Um, so that's why it's in the order that it's in. We addressed capacity and, the, and then, you know, so okay. the how can state of Hartwood the buildings. Elementary be in worse capacity than Drew? Worse condition? Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess that's a question for them. I'm just telling you what we were told. Right. I mean, what, what uh, staff told us was that there was this facility condition index. Now, we could certainly ask um, between now and next year uh, for the new people to just double check those facility indexes for us. And if it changes, it could be moved. But all of these projects are six or seven years out so I, I understand so we but could, still I mean yeah. if this is the ranking you know and and in terms of early childhood special are we already out of capacity yes. that this yeah. yes but we, in, in we have been one we phase have one and two I mean I'm looking at phase one and two and then North Stafford Fine Arts Wing renovation is all the way at the bottom um, okay just saying well, and, and this is also one of our topics. <laughs> right. We're going to have to talk very fast at that work session. Yeah, but 12 o'clock. Because, <laughs> okay. that's right. Tick tock. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just saying I'm surprised. Look at the inefficiencies and the deficiencies in that fine arts wing and how old that school is. I don't understand how it didn't make it any higher, but. Um, it, it's a question of funds yeah. and you know that just how I'm, much I'm money saying making it higher it versus look look at the amount we could get something done that is five versus look at the others but yeah well there, it may be something that we need to be creative about looking at resources and year in funding and you know what may come open so the fact that it's that it's on here is positive because there's so many that didn't even make it to this list. You know what? But, but it doesn't mean we can't um, relook at that. I understand. You point. could see the glass half full, and I'm maybe looking at it half empty because this thing has been, um, for a long time, it's been there. It needs to be worked on. I think uh, this, your, your yeah, Go, I'll, I'll, I'll take it up um, after. No, I, I, I think I think it's a good a good point that you're making, and you know my point is that just because it's last on this list doesn't mean it's going to get done last. There's always a matter of needs and priorities, and you know looking and, and perhaps there's a way to do it incrementally, if funding becomes available or yeah. we can make funding. Available. Okay, I just don't want this to be a fairy farm. That's all. Oh, no, is that going to be a generic now? A fairy farm. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it, Mr. McCutcheon. What did you, what happened, <laughs> Miss Young? I'm sorry, Miss Young. We have a, We have a new vocabulary: a fairy farm. <laughs> it means a project that never gets done. Yeah. The, oh, it's a fairy farm. I get it. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Not. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we'll, we we we're finished discussion on this one, right? That'll that'll move us on to uh, the last information item. 10.06, adoption of a resolution authorizing an application to the Virginia Public School Authority for the sale of bonds in an amount not to exceed $7,335,000 with the objective of providing net proceeds of $6,825,000 for the 2019 fall bond pool. If anybody has any questions about this, I'd address them to Dr. Kisner and he can share them the answers with all of us. Um, that'll be back to us for action at the next meeting. And then we have the announcement of our next meetings of the school board. Our work session, 8 o'clock, August 24th. <laughs> I got sore throat. <laughs> Breakfast. <laughs> and the regular school board meeting on September 10th. And we can now be adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see ya. Jim, you think I should look at...
get that list of the CIP list again or?